about it, the more I felt sorry for him, really. I don't think Henry would have got a very fair trial because of who was killed, a titled lady. Henry Jacobi was bottom of the food chain. He came from a very poor family. When he's got the establishment against him, he didn't stand much of a chance, really. Before being charged with Lady White's murder, Henry Jacobi had made a series of detailed and differing statements to the police. But were his statements reliable? Jeremy and Sasha are analysing what he said. He made three statements altogether. The first one was as part of the general police inquiry into all members of staff who were present in the hotel and was broadly speaking uninformative. He said he didn't, didn't see anything. And the second statement was made four days after, between 9.30 p.m. and 1.30 a.m. So he was being questioned for a very long period of time and I haven't seen any evidence that he had the assistance of a solicitor on the 19th of March. Henry Jacobi confessed. Well, we're dealing here with an 18-year-old. I'm really concerned that this vulnerable kid was exploited by the police and that ultimately his statement of the 19th of March is unreliable. Could Henry Jacobi's difficult upbringing have impacted his state of mind and made him more vulnerable within the legal system? The barristers are meeting with psychologist Dr Roberta Babb. Do you have concerns about the reliability of that ultimate confession statement? Yes, definitely. There's so many things that we don't know. What sort of conversations he had with police outside the evidence room. In the second interview, he had five people present. And if yeah. we think about this as a man who came from one of the lower classes, to be in that situation with so much power and authority in the room, it's got to be terrifying. I think he was even described as hysterical at one point. And, and no lawyer. Exactly. He doesn't maybe understand fully about the implications of saying things. And we know that young people have a tendency to engage in false confessions when they are tired, stressed or traumatised. He was more likely to say things and admit to things and get confused by things that he may not have done if he'd had the proper procedures followed. Jacobi's account at trial was that on the night of the killing, he had left his room upon hearing voices and armed himself with a hammer. He heard sounds coming from inside Lady White's room and rushed in, then struck her, believing she was an intruder. But was this account more believable than his previous story? In my view, Henry Jacobi's evidence could not have been clearer. When he was asked by his counsel, had you any intention of stealing any money? Henry Jacobi responded, no. And then critically, had you any intention of doing anybody any harm? No, sir. Had you any intention of murdering Lady White? No. And yet what the judge did in summing up was to say, even if this young man's evidence were correct, in my opinion, it would save him from a verdict of murder, but would expose him to a verdict of manslaughter. That's wrong, isn't it? The judge made it quite plain he didn't believe a word of Henry Jacobi's defence. And the judge said, there are two stories. Make up your mind which is the correct one. The proper approach is, are you satisfied beyond reasonable doubt that the prosecution case is the correct one, not which one do you prefer? This is a, a pretty rudimentary error. The jury found Henry Jacobi guilty of murder and the judge passed the sentence of death. Peter has come to Pentonville Prison, where Jacoby was taken after his trial. We've got a diary of a hangman by John Ellis, who was the executioner. With just about 12 hours left to live, he was playing cricket as if he hadn't got a care in the world. Jacoby was laughing and chattering and enjoying himself. And I thought then that this is wrong to hang that child. He's called him a child, which is, I suppose he really was. As I pinioned him, I said, look straight at me when you get there, laddie, and it will soon be over. Jacoby followed me out of the condemned cell, but then caught sight of the governor and stopped short. I want to thank you and the officers for the kindness you have shown me, he said in a firm voice, and it is an episode that almost moved everybody to tears.
Peter, you must be absolutely ecstatic at that. I am. I'm over the moon. I think when you reflect on today, the thought that that judge's failures could underline to have resulted in Henry being wrongly hanged is a very serious matter. Yeah, it is, yeah, very serious, yeah. Well, if he'd been convicted of manslaughter and gone to prison and served his time, I, I could have met him. <laughs>